Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and adjust the camera. Because I didn't do it before I started the, before I hit stream and put up the holding pattern. So welcome to the, uh, welcome to the behind the scenes adventure. There we go. That seems, that seems about right. Uh, it's, we're back to the, to the checkerboard pattern. I'm not sure a second camera is going to help us today. I think, I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna, gonna have it go away. There we go. Okay. Anything else that needs to be fiddled with before move that second camera and no, probably good. Uh, it will be hard not to edit this out when I put it on YouTube. <laughs> But uh, even harder to just pause the stream and fiddle with it. So here we are. Dressed too warmly for the day. Getting ready. Need a stirring stick. A stirring stick that, that won't rust. Well. This will rust, but use this end. Hello, our craft and Auntie Shepherd. Um, soft start to this uh, to this stream. Um, because it was pointed out to me that I should. Oh, it's not soft start because I didn't adjust the cameras before I before I went live. Um, and I've taken the second camera away because I'm just, I'm not certain that it will help. Um, because what we're gonna do for the first part of this is prepare slip. Um, we're gonna prepare slip for painting. And then, as you may recall, we have an army of cows, three cows. Let's see if I can, oh, they're all, they're all kind of in the back here. Um, we have we have test cow, who's more of a antelope. Um, while you were gone, I made this small dog. Um, oh, you look at that! I did all that prep and complained about stuff, and I forgot to turn on my camera control, so that's why it's all weird and blurry. Fix that. Aha. In focus. Um, and then last but not least, we have uh, an owl with a sword. Um, who is now hollow. Now, now politely hollow. And all ready. And I've printed this time. I've been I've been good and printed out actual reference with the printer. So I've also gotten it wet already, as you can see. Um, but so I've got reference in the background, so I don't have to try to look at my computer screen for everything. Um, but for right now, what I'm trying to do is prepare some slip. And I did not add enough water to the red slip earlier. 
So it's kind of behind the curve. But that's okay. It'll get there. Got that. This is black clay, which is um, made black with manganese. It was already properly constituted. So I've just thinned it down. Um, other equipment I have is this pitcher of water to thin things if I need to. Two bowls. A tea strainer from um, Daiso that we're going to strain the slip with because the slip needs to be smooth. It can't have can't have any large grains because we're painting it on. And then we have two lovely paint brushes and back here we have a bowl of water off screen or barely on screen for the paint brushes. And our goal is to paint some cows. We might get to painting the owl, we might not. I kind of have to sketch the owl's pattern a little bit before I just go straight into painting because it's more detailed. Um, also back to Earl Grey in the Cursed Unicorn Cup. So, um, you're getting to watch me prep the slip because of Auntie Shepherd, who felt that I should do it live because experimental archaeology. So, so if you hate this, <laughs> it's not my fault. I mean, it is my fault, but it's not. Also, I'm sitting in a stool because, because this is, painting is sitting work. Sculpting is standing work. Painting is sitting work. Don't know why. That's just the way it is. So this to me is starting to feel like a good consistency. I'm kind of just basing it on my own understanding of paint. We're making a paint. We're making like a tempera paint, but with clay slip. So, oops, now I'm spattering it everywhere. So I feel like we want it to have, I'm not sure we need to strain this. I'm going to do an experiment. Come here, cow that's not a great cow. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick test here. Just realize I'm totally off camera. Hmm. Let's see. I mean, yeah, the black is feeling like a really, a really good consistency, actually. You know what? Let's just paint his nose. So I'm actually pretty pleased with with my pre-prepared my pre-prepared nice smooth black. But the black started as a nice smooth clay. I don't know if you guys remember the last time I used it on here, but it's a I think for the octopus, but it's like a nice it's already a nice smooth clay. So actually, I feel like this is a pretty good consistency and I'm not going to strain it. I'm just going to leave it because um, because that way I won't have to wash my strainer and you guys don't have to wait while I leave. So so we've got that painted on. This will be black when fired, so he'll have black stripes and a little black face. I guess he's kind of a zebra now. I don't know. Um, but the red is more of a problem because the red has grog in it, which is why I love it, but also not ideal for... Um, for slip painting. So we're going to need to strain it out. We're going to need to strain out its quote impurities. Um, but also there's sort of a chunk of it in the middle here <laughs> that I need to dissolve and I need it to break down some so that I have enough slip clay in the water. So you might just have to talk to me while I stir. Um, so 
50% win, 50% um, planning fail. How's everyone doing? I hope that I hope that you enjoy experimental archaeology fun, because uh, because most of the the black will be really good for the owl, but the cows mostly seem to be well. There's there's a red and black cow it looks like, but they seem mostly to be red. So I don't know why there aren't ten million people in there being excited with you, Auntie Shepherd. I know that De Frequit came in and said that he was quite ill and could not watch today. Um, so I hope that he feels better. Um, not on Twitter. Ah, <laughs> oh, the username, not on Twitter. W welcome, not on Twitter. I'm glad that you're here and excited. I'm, uh... Stirring. Yeah, we can't, we can't, uh, we can't offer any votive cows because I can't fire the cows. Um, people keep saying pit firing, but I, I don't have a yard, you guys. I live in a city. I have a deck. And yes, technically, you can pit fire in like a big metal container with a fire, but I'd have to get fire bricks, and it'd still be on a wooden deck, and I would still feel very unsafe. Um... Auntie Shepherd, would Ursula let us dig a hole and pit fire? I could mail, no, nah, they probably break in the mail, but I don't know, I could very carefully mail you things to fire in the backyard. I don't know how well it would go. There are so many reasons that could go poorly. But, um, but look, the longer I'm told I'm not allowed to go anywhere, the more likely it is that I'll try. <laughs> Oh, my hand is tired. Okay. We're getting there. We're getting we're getting to a to a, a nice a nicer consistency with more of the clay. I don't need all of the clay to dissolve. I don't need it to get thick. I just need enough of the clay to dissolve that it's kind of that same paint consistency as as the uh as the black. Um, it would be a, a pit fire. It would be so hot. In fact, it's tr if they break, you can fire the pieces and make a replica. It's true. It's true. If they break, we can fire them anyway. There's no. There's no rules. I mean, I've got, well, not, I've probably, not, not 50 pounds anymore, it's 25, and so probably, I probably used a pound, so I've probably got 49 pounds of, uh, friggin' buff with sand. <laughs> so anything you want made with buff with sand, <laughs> I'll, I'll make the attempt. Um, I have found out that the clay store is doing curbside pickup with no contact, so, um, so I think, friends, that we aren't we aren't trapped in here with buff with clay for the rest of the shelter in place, um, which has here been extended until May first. So at some point, I think I will have to go pick up more clay uh, because I don't like buff with sand. <laughs> okay, this feels this feels better. Okay which we're going to put it in this bowl because we can't put the black in that bowl. All right. Let's let's see how poorly this goes. We'll just do some straining. Okay. Oh, look at that. It's straining. Uh, honestly, better than I thought it would. <laughs> it's actually straining better than I thought it would. So, 
That's exciting. Um, so for reference, what I'm what I've got left in here is is the grit, the thicker clay. Um, a little bit of the grit is coming through. It's not a fine enough mesh, and it's a pretty fine grit. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it aside. I'm gonna put this mess back where the goose used to be because the goose had to be moved to the dining room table for space. And uh, so that that's that's pretty. There's still some there's some grog in it, but not too much. And I don't have a finer sieve because that's the life I lead. Tea is the finest thing I need to strain. So actually, that's not fair. I could probably figure out. I could probably find some cheesecloth somewhere in this house. But but no, this is fine. Okay. Let's let's just let's just be decorative about this and have and have two nice bowls of slip here. So we can put this back there. We have two two nice painty bowls. Um, a stirry thing. Let's find a stirry thing in my pile of things. Oh, ha! Huh. Over here, it turns out I've got a spoon. So a spoon spoon end will be for for red. Um, let's add just a tiny bit of water. This could be a mistake, but we're doing it. Um, add a tiny bit of water. Oh, that sound! I'm gonna try not to do that. That's the uh, that's the fine grain grog scraping against the not smooth. And oh, that's a good that's a good consistency. That feels that feels like a good paint. And then we'll use the other side to stir the black. Okay. Good. And then we'll use this sponge to try and and moderate the amount of clay that goes everywhere. Excellent. And I'm off screen, all my tools are in a pile on a towel <laughs> because I washed them. And now I need the towel. So everything is falling on the floor as I move the pile of tools. I'm going to attempt to clean up after myself here. There we go. And behind me on the floor is a drawing of a gecko, which I will pick up because otherwise I will roll over in this stool. This is what fell on the floor behind me. Picture of a gecko. <laughs> anyway, I wanted the towel. So. Votive cows are not that, they're not that complicated to make, it turns out. I feel pretty good about them. Okay. We have two bowls of paint. Test cow. Yeah, I mean, think, think, of, think of firing as, as, as metaphorical cattle sacrifice. Okay, so let's let's test this red. What are we gonna? What kind of stripes will we give you? Let's give you. Let's give you a little bit of. And then the base of the horns. Still, I, the, the grit is not, it should be perfectly smooth. I should strain it through something finer. The grit is not archeologically accurate, um, but it feels close. Am I, am I in, do I need to close? I'm gonna keep holding this guy up. I'm not gonna paint him, I think, on the table. So I'm gonna, now that I'm done with that, I think I'm gonna bring my focus up. 
so that you guys can see. You can see what I'm doing right about here. Right about, nope, too far. Real professional videography right here. I went to film school. <laughs> no, focus. Okay. <laughs> the Potu is judging everyone. That's what he's there for. Staring into your soul. Let's, let's see. Let's do, okay, well, let's give him, let's, let's, let's go mad and give him a nice ring around his eye. Um, I have smaller brushes that I could use, but I wanted to try and use just sort of the two sizes. Um, also, because these are natural bristle and bamboo, and they felt kind of, I don't know if more accurate is the right way to describe it, but, uh, but sort of more in keeping with the, uh, with the attempt at reproduction of archaeology, so... Pro tip for painting on 3D surfaces with a brush and you're worried that your hands will shake or you won't do a smooth line, brace it with a finger so that you're holding it with both hands and then just paint with these three fingers. Helps keep things steady. Let's see. We'll put, we'll put black lines on his, on his horns in a second. But um, now we're just going to go, now we're just going to go mad with uh, <coughs> with stripes. The thing I do like about this brush is that it's good for a, for a nice brush line. Okay, now I have to try and, oh, now I have to Ah, uh, painting 3D things. <laughs> now I have to try and make the other side match. Um, oh yeah, so here's, this is the reason, the reason that we're doing this. Um, on, on bone dry clay that has not been bisque fired. Uh, is that the water from the slip is absorbing into that clay almost immediately. Yeah, those lines, those lines on his forehead make him look pretty mad. He's mad that he's a starving cow. He's mad that he's mad that he's the experiment cow. Um, anyway, the slip the slip is just dirt particles suspended in water. So when the water absorbs, this is drying almost instantly. Um, which means that it's easy to do something that won't smear. Um, and it's why you wait until it's bone dry. You can see it, you can actually see it drying kind of as it, as it progresses, like it's red and then it's darker as I've painted it newly on. And then on this side, it's already dry. So the, uh, now the reason to do slip painting, um, after, or before, no, 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 no. The reason to do slip painting after I've fired it the first time would be if I wanted to be able to wipe this away easily. Like if I try and wipe it off, like I'll just I'll just do a little. Let me see if I'll do a little experiment like right there. Um, if I try and wipe that off, I'm re-wetting unfired clay, so I'm kind of smearing it around and I'm I'm like wiping actual clay body away. And now that's just sort of damp and I can feel the grain because I've wiped away the outside and brought the sand to the surface. Whereas if it were bisque fired, I could wipe stuff away more easily because less of it would absorb into the clay body.
However, comma, because we are we are recreating these from from archaeology. I am fairly certain that they would have only been fired once. Um, yeah. The also the originals the originals we're missing we're missing some of the original. We're, this is not an exact replica because the originals probably would have been um, burnished um, properly, coated with some oil before they were they were slip painted. Like there would have been a whole preparation process, and then they would have been fired at a lower temperature, and the the burnishing would have the shine would stay. Um, we're not. We're firing these in the end at at cone six because that's the clay I've got, and uh, and because we don't do a firing low enough to keep the burnishing. Um. So, so we aren't we aren't finishing these exactly. We aren't we aren't making the uh, we aren't properly. We aren't properly doing it. We're only halfway doing it. Um, and if we're going to call it experimental archaeology, it's important to be clear about that. Um, if we were pit firing, I'd consider getting a different clay. Well, I need a different clay. Um, I have a burnishing rock. Um, I have a lot of rocks, but this is my favorite burnishing rock. Um, it's flat on one side, slightly round on the other side. It's my favorite rock. It's from Ireland. I found it on a beach. Um, and it's my burnishing rock. Uh, let's let's do let's do wavy lines. Let's try some wavy lines. I mean, it's painting pretty nicely. Like I'm not I'm not sad about it. It's it's got a really decent paint consistency. There's a little bit too much water in that one because I washed the brush and didn't didn't dip it off enough. Um, but but yeah you can see how if there's more water it has kind of a watercolory feel. The less water, the the firmer the um, the firmer the color. Um, yeah, hi, get to know nature. Yeah, we we took away second camera because I felt like it was wasn't it wasn't going to help in this situation because we're not sculpting, we're painting. Um, we've prepared black and red slip, and we're painting our our um, our votive cows. And if we've got time after we paint the votive cows, we'll paint the uh, the owl. But I don't know that we will because it is already five forty. Um, I might go a little late, but I still have to. I have to draw. I have to sketch the. I have to sketch the owl. The owl has uh, has details going on. But but we're here. We're here painting. Also, we have a bunch of cat. Like we have we have three cows and a dog. So. We might not get to the owl, but that's okay. Um, I can always do the owl a different day. He's not going anywhere. And slip is clay with water added, so you can just always make more slip. Um, I hope there's not too much background noise. My my computer is mad because it's warm, and also all of the doors and windows are open because it's warm, and uh, and oh man, it hasn't been warm in a while. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You know, he doesn't have a shelf life, which is helpful. Nothing, nothing bad will happen. Barring accidents. Accidents could happen, I suppose. But, 
but let's just assume they won't. I've had to move the goose to the dining room table again because there's just not enough space on the desk. I mean, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that the audio seems fine. It's probably just me over worrying. It's a nice sensitive mic and it's pinned to my shirt. So it's probably fine. Let's, what are we gonna do with, I guess we're gonna have to do stripes on the back legs too. I mean, we want it to match. All right, so, <laughs> too close. Um, so here's a, here's a nice dry, I wonder if they have stripies on their bellies. I bet they do. You know what, let's, let's not, let's not ignore, let's not ignore the tummy. Let's not ignore the cow tummy. There we go. Um, cow. Painted. Hello, polyester kit. Welcome to our exploratory archaeology stream. Okay, so test cow. Test cow has been completed. To what I feel is is a is my satisfaction. I feel like I'm feeling I'm feeling good about about this this. Consistency. I feel like I feel like we've pretty much succeeded. I'm gonna clean my brush because I remember that I said I was gonna do some black on the horns. So let's let's do some some additional black here. I'm not certain. I'm I'm looking it's hard to tell from 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 the images I have if they are doing multiple colors on the cows ever or if it's a firing artifact and they're they're all done in red. Um So I am not sure whether I am being wholly accurate here. But I have two colors of slip, <laughs> so um, so I might as well I might as well use both. And uh, this will fire his nose, his, the center of his eyes, those two stripes, his, his angry eyebrow stripes, and the stripes on his horns will fire black. Um, this is the the um, the cledge of the octopus with the I think it's called I think it's just called might. I don't know. Uh, manganese makes it black and hang on I think can I reach can I no I'm tethered to my computer I can't reach far enough maybe it's octopus nope I can't just never gonna see the octopus he's too far away <laughs> um but I can do I can do the dog I think next. What do you think, little dog? Ah, my roommate is bringing me the octopus. Um, it is this clay, the black clay, and it will fire, um, the slip will fire ideally black. I hope that it's thick enough that it will fire black and not um, like brownish, but Here's help. Here's hoping. Um, but I think we're gonna the the dog. I think I think gets to be gets to be in black. So so let's see. Let's see. Yeah, you know a border collie. Lines on his, <clears throat> excuse me, lines on his ears. Uh, 
Oh, do we need a black a black nose? Just just eyes in a circle, maybe. Okay. Yeah, I I know that I know that there were definitely dogs um in in ancient Greece. I just don't I just don't know what they looked like. Um oh, thank you, Warcraft. I'm pretty pleased with how the octopus fired. Um I was worried there would be more blending of the two clays or that the clays that I used to give it the shine in places wouldn't work, but it did. Worked well, okay. So, uh, I'm trying to be on camera when I do this, but I'm also trying to do a good job. So, if the two end up mutually exclusive, I apologize. Um, yeah, so a thing that happens with black clay that I've noticed is that um, a lot of times if you glaze over it, it becomes um, brown, like a clear glaze over black clay tends to make it brown. Um, so I used a, a glossy black glaze and I was worried that when it bled into the raw clay it would make bits brown, but it did not, and that makes me very happy. Okay, let's see, how are we gonna, I think, I think I think he gets like a chin strap kind of stripe here. And then kind of vertical stripes, I think. I think we're gonna go with with this kind of deal. And there's a good kind of one of these pictures with vertical stripes that just that just follow like all the way down and I think that's how we're gonna I think that's how we're gonna roll. That one was a little wobbly. Okay. And then there'll be a stripe down the back. How far down the back? Just from like the shoulders. And then up the tail. Oh good, I made this impossible. Way to go past Sarah. Making that curved tail. Oh, a zooarchaeologist specializing. Flint Diddle is a zooarchaeologist specializing in the ancient Mediterranean. Nice. Just going to give him, you know, like a fluffy tail. <laughs> With wildly, wildly different weights of line, because, because look, slip painting is, uh, it's quite the thing.
I am finding that the trickiest part is loading the brush properly um, so that it's kind of even and it paints an even line, which is interesting. If I let it get too, too uneven or too thick, I won't be able to paint a smooth line. So. Things we're learning today. So striped dog, <laughs> I'm just thinking of him as fluffy. It's what I've, I've just, I've given him, I've given him fluffy lines. That's what this is about. All right. The part where we try and make it match on the other side. by doing it backwards. How many? Let me do another one. There we go. And then we had these kind of neat Go down. Oh good, a whole Greek dog thread. We can learn. I can't. Um, I can't because I am doing a thing. But you guys can learn. Please learn. Please learn about Greek dogs. That sounds awesome. Okay. Oh, why not? Let's have one more stripe down the back. There we go. And and we're just gonna we're just gonna invent stuff now. Yes. Good. Good dog. So. I'm gonna actually, this feels, some of these stripes feel a little, a little, um, not thin in thickness, but thin in application. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of slip on top of them, kind of just paint them a second time. Because where I can sort of watercolor, where I can kind of see the, the buff through it, I'm a little bit worried it will not fire cleanly. It'll fire. Well, that made that stripe worse. That was not a clean redo. We'll just have to make it thicker to cover up my mistake. <laughs> um, I'm worried that it'll just be kind of like a, a grayish or like a, a brown. So I'm, I'm going to reinforce it a little bit. I think that's a little bit better. Just where it where it's where it's gotten thin. I want it to to still fire to a darker color. Okay. That's better. What do we think? Do we need do we need a nose? I think we might need a nose. Dark nose. Uh, 
heart-shaped nose. There we go. Nose. All right. Little, our little herd dog. Let's see if we can, we can sort of get him. Yeah, we can, he can hang out in this corner. There we go. All right. The dog. We've done it. It's time to move on to a cow. Okay, decision time. Are we gonna are we gonna do black and red on the same cow, or are we gonna stick to only red in an attempt to to sort of mimic the uh, the actual archaeological evidence? What do you think, chat? What should we do? Carry on attempting to be accurate-ish, or uh... yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I mean. I feel like I feel like they were, I feel like they, they they weren't mixing in in the images that I have seen in the cows. Anyway, they were not mixing colors. However, I have the power to mix colors. We have three cows. In case you were, three more cows. Um, in case you were wondering. So, we've got, um, also, um, some of the cows, I burnished some. Can't really tell. Um, this one is a little bit clearer, um, but I, I burnished them because I think it might make it easier to paint. Um, this one cow I did not, um, and I, did I burnish? I didn't really. I burnished the dog a little, but not a whole lot. And I didn't burnish starving cow at all. So, so let's, let's see. We'll start with red. Let's, let's start with a red cow. It's true, we have three cows. We can do whatever we want. Um, so let's, let's start a red cow. I think we need more water. We're losing losing water. I am pouring from way too high. That is so dangerous. Remember, like paint, slip slowly dries out as the water evaporates. Ah, sorry. Just needed to be properly stirred. Nothing I could do about it. Okay. Let's try that again. With, with a better consistency of slip. There we go. Now. Some of them do not seem to have eyes. I agree with Auntie Shepherd in that I think the ones with eyes are more fun. So. So we're painting on, we're definitely, we're definitely going for, going for eyes. Oh, let's see. And then I, I, some of them don't have, well, not most of them. Most of them have their noses painted. So we're going to paint the nose. Because that's also just cuter. And it will help differentiate cow from dog. Okay, let's see, how are we gonna, okay, this time I think, I think circles all the way around the horns maybe would be fun. So now you can you can kind of see 
the issue that we're getting with with the fact that the strainer isn't isn't quite as as fine as it could be is that you can see the oh, can you can you see yeah you can see the grains that are coming with the slip ah it's true we 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 don't have a second camera for the for the i mean here's the thing it's just right here i i only i i i don't know where i'd put it for the cows though let's let's see if you wanted to if you wanted to stare at cows there's just all this stuff in the way <laughs> You see, it's like back there, and I, I don't know. There's a bowl. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen. I don't, I don't think there's space. I think I have, I think I have too many materials this time. Next time, next time I sculpt, camera will be back. Second camera. Second camera of, of finished sculptures staring blankly into your souls will return. I promise. Ooh, that was a wobbly line. Let's clean that up. start so so nicely with the tip of my brush and then they always end up getting a little bit thicker no I missed ah oh, that's forever now it's a permanent it's a permanent mistake slip painting is forever Okay. There we go. Stripey horn. The po two. Yeah, the po two is po two is now second camera. Nothing 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 can stare into your stole as well as as uh as the po two can. Oh, that's such a good line. I'm never going to be able to compl I'm never going to be able to do the second half of that line as clean and thin as I did the first part. Uh. When when one thing goes really well and it's like, "No. I'll never be able to keep this up." Yep, there it is. Oh, one perfect line. Oh well, what can you do? Okay. Cow. And I suppose yeah, I suppose I could have I could have um I could uh I could have moved the Poe to and put the second camera down there, but then it would just it would just point at like cups of things at this point. Like it would just be a view of like bowls of slip. Because I can't really hold it low enough to paint where the second camera can see it. It's just to. too fiddly.
so I have to to rely on overhead camera. So I hope Poe 2 makes up for it. He continues to bring me joy. And I hope he brings you guys joy as well. Um, I think that we're going to stick to this streaming schedule um, for the future. Um, Monday and Friday. Because Monday night would have been the night I would have been in Pottery Studio. That is now closed. So... So I'll just take that time and uh, use it to stream instead. And that just sort of makes the most sense with my schedule moving forward. As sort of people catch back up with the projects I was supposed to be doing. They stop panicking that everyone's working from home and like realize that they could have had all those meetings over the phone always <laughs> this whole time. Uh, I promise, I promise I will try not to frighten or troll you, our craft, with the POTU anymore. I promise, I promise I'll try and be good. Okay, let's see. How shall we? How shall we carry on? Let's do... some forehead stripes. Very stripey cow. And then... I kind of liked the ones that we did Where it was, uh, yeah, like that. Kind of liked those on, on, on first, on first cow that's not really a cow. So I think let's carry on with those. But yeah, I can't, I can't really carry on streaming every, every day. Um, Partly because I'm an introvert, and it turns out you can see too many people on the internet. But partly because um, my actual job looks like it's starting up again. Which is very exciting. Because actual bills require actual money. <laughs> so here's hoping that that all catches itself back up. Um, yeah, it's, well, it's freelance, so it's, um, kind of used to it being, like, nothing and then something, but I had a lot of things get sort of put on the back burner or delayed because companies were just like, oh, I don't know, we don't know how to work from home. <laughs> this is new. We have to figure it out. Our, our, t our IT department is busy. So, now they've kind of... All learned how Zoom works and are getting back into the swing of things, it looks like, which is excellent. Which means that hopefully everything will go back into production again. Um, yeah, I might still do games occasionally. Um, I'm I'm specifically I'm not I'm not carrying on with uh with Subnautica without you guys so far. So so I might still occasionally do that. I'll definitely at some point go back to uh to Stardew Valley's Darkest Timeline. Um but they're not going to be they'll probably be like they were before either random or a replacement when I just don't have the time to set up an art stream. They are not as well attended as art streams. 
for some reason. Um, so they are a lower priority. Welcome back, Auntie Shepherd. I'm glad that that you are you are fully groceried up. Um, so now I'm just going to make some stuff up. Now I'm just going to put, put lines wherever I want. Just going to... I'm going to fully do whatever I want. That one went a little too far. It's fine. Let's see. Horizontal. Just all the stripes everywhere. So many cow stripes. Um, but yeah, I think art art is also, like anybody, there's a thousand people streaming games on Twitch at all times. Um, and art is a little bit different. I think that's probably why. It's your cow and I can and I can stripe it. Okay, let's see. How are we gonna What other I do I like the squiggly stripes. I think we're gonna go I think we're gonna go with with squiggly with squiggly stripes again. We'll do oh too much water. Need to tidy those up. Learning about slip painting. So, squiggly line. Yes, yeah, squiggly lines. They're just more fun. And they imply that the cow is curly, which I kind of enjoy. Oh, it's it's people. <laughs> oh, groceries. Yeah, um, a lot of my my parents are in Tennessee, and they also said that their grocery store has curbside pickup, um, which is cool. Meanwhile, they might be scientists' neighbors keep having people over, and no one in stores are acting properly. That's upsetting. Um, they might be scientists. Maybe you can uh, can can either get grocery delivery or get a friend to uh, to do dropping off stuff on your porch for you. Stay safe. Uh, it's an upsetting and frightening time, you guys. And there's only so much that any one of us can do about it. But hopefully people will start to... You know. Do things properly. Um, so yeah, I hope I hope I'm helping a little bit. I hope I'm I'm offering a little bit of a of an escape. Because I am lucky enough to not really need to go out to do my job. Uh, my area has taken aggressive governmental policies, and that's helpful. So 
So, so, so far, let's just carry on the squiggly lines. Um, so, so far things feel like, at least here, we're doing our best. And that's kind of all we can do. Yeah, squiggly lines on the legs. Yeah, I feel like the thing that helped here, frankly, was the government forcing things to close. Um, it sucks. It's not great for small businesses. I'm worried about many of them. But if people can't go to places, they won't. They've had to close all of the parks because people were in social dis like people were just flooding into parks and not social distancing. It's uh it's a bit of a mess, but but something is being done, which it's just you know what, let's just join these lines. Let's just be mad. Let's just let's just go crazy with slip paint. Hunty <laughs> Shepherds in one of your slides, nice. Oh, with the cow. Okay. What did I do on that side? Oh, right, squiggly lines. I was like, I don't remember what happened two minutes ago. <laughs> AKA proper sized cow versus too huge. I like it. Um. So anyway, guys, do what you gotta do to uh, to help your to help yourself stay sane. To try and deal with your mental health because uh, this is weird for everybody. This is uh, it's not just you. And chat, you are correct. Carry cows are perfect. I can find no flaw in your reasoning. Argument is sound. All right, look at that. We've painted a whole cow. Actually, I say we've painted a whole cow, but let's, but let's do, let's do some, some inside the leg stripes. Let's, let's try and make our cow more exciting. Yeah, there we go. And then, just completely off camera, trying to find a way to hold my arms to do this. Um, the back of the legs. There we go. Good. Good. We have a cow. Finished a cow. We've slip painted an entire cow. Hooray! Such a good cow. Looks very surprised. It's probably looking at the dog. <laughs> All right, so next cow will be a, a black slip cow. Yeah, there are two wave two cows in the photos that I have with like really wavy lines and I'm really into them. Just they look like that they look more fun. Um honestly I think that my lines are, are tidier than most of the lines I'm seeing in these cows. But um but look, that's just how it is. Okay. Second cow. Second cow is gonna be black slip. Um actually before let's 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 stir that back up since it's settled. That is the thing about slip. It is particles suspended in water. It's particles of clay suspended in water, so it will settle. 
uh, pretty really quickly actually, and you need to to re to remix it to make sure that you keep them all evenly suspended. I mean, I I do have nice brushes, but um, but brushes are not hard to make. Um, it's not actually that difficult, especially if you are in an agricultural community, to make a nice brush because you have access to natural hairs. Um, bristles on, on pigs make nice brushes. Uh, squirrels, small animals. Um, it depends on what kind of brush you want. But yeah, um, usually the stiffer, the stiffer, longer hairs um, would make something like this. Y you can use um, yeah, pig boar bristles um, are common. Horse hair is less common, doesn't wick as well. Um, but then you can also, this is actually probably a finer thing um like the tails of like the the hairs and the tails of rabbits um the hairs and the tails of squirrels um well make me nice brushes from goat hair and sinew and sticks you're gonna have to make multiple i mean we have to, so here's the thing i and i it's kind it's it's an argument i've had before but it's kind of a thing i feel strongly about which is that that, uh, well, you don't have to shave a squirrel, you have to murder a squirrel and, and strip its tail. Wow, that took a dark turn. <laughs> sorry, sorry, chat. Hi, O10 G3. Um, but no, so I feel like it's important to assume that, um, that someone, for example, making a brush. I don't know how many, I don't know how ground ha hog hair works for brushes. Anyway, I think it's important to assume that someone historically making a brush to make a bunch of clay things would be very good at making brushes and would have made a lot of brushes so that you making a brush once is not the analog to um, to a professional craftsperson making a brush out of those materials. Because um, I think, I mean, I don't know how common it is at, in, you know, actual experimenting circles but when people when I see people kind of casually do recreation stuff frequently there's a tendency to be like I've tried this and it's so hard and it's like well it, it was but if you do it 30 more times it will be less hard <laughs> you'll start to do a better job don't forget that your first attempt is not the definition of how easy or difficult something was. But for this kind of thing, I would think stiffer, stiffer bristles are good. Um, Yeah, human hair is not great. Um, you'd you'd want to use you'd want to use something from from something you've already. Hogs are probably a pretty common one. Because that's just a thing that you have around, and it's it's a waste product otherwise, basically. But they make quite good bristle brushes, especially really stiff ones. I'm going to attempt to do a little a little bit of decorative shaping on the nose this time. We're going to go up and around. I think we're going to do it. Yeah. Angles are weird. There we go. So like a little a curve.
now now chat is discussing how they're gonna how they're gonna achieve a groundhog um But yeah, so Auntie Shepherd said she had to spin around five pounds of wool on her wheel to get good. And that's, yeah, that's it. It's, um, thing, and things that we still think of as, like, craft skills, like spinning, it seems like people are, are willing, more willing to be like, oh yeah, of course, you have to, you have to learn to do that. It's a skill. But often with, like, constructing objects and things like that, I don't know, it just, there seems to be more of a tendency in my experience for, for, for people who want to kind of casually try it to be like, oh no, this was impossible. It makes such a terrible thing. And it's like, well, maybe, maybe it was you. <laughs> maybe you just didn't do a good job. The interesting thing about, about ceramics is that we're still using a lot of the processes. Like we know how a lot of it was done because we can still do it, which is which is fun. If you and Jack Russell Terrier, you can borrow. Oh man, Chad is really Chad is really trying to get rid of this groundhog. Oh dear. Yeah, I don't actually know what we know about our tools from the from the Mycenaean period. Um, problematically, they're almost certainly, um, made from, from, from non-lasting materials. <laughs> so. So it's hard to know. Um, but reeds, reeds and hair are potentially a good bet. Reeds like bamboo um, have the hollow inside, which makes it easy to sort of bind. You can also, I don't, hmm, there's, you can also wrap it. It's a whole, yeah, you can, you can wrap a bundle of hair set it on the top of a stick and then wrap both tightly and bind them together that way. Um, okay, how are we gonna do, how are we gonna do you? Let's go with horizontal Horizontal, then, then verticals. Yeah, that seems fun. Makes him look mad though. That's okay. Oh yeah. It, Scribal tombs, maybe, in Egypt, for for surviving brushes. That would be interesting if someone someone looks some of this stuff up. Send me links on Twitter. Sorry, I realize that my hand is completely in your way, but but I can't help it. <laughs> I'm right-handed. Okay, we're we gonna... There, let's stripey horns. Looks like he's wearing a little hat. Okay, what to do now? Oh yeah, what well, paintings paintings um 
also have a tendency, or at least Egyptian ones, have a tendency to sort of formalize their stylization. So um, it's more heavy on symbology than most. So you'd be like, well, yeah, everyone in ancient Egypt knew that was a paintbrush, but that's not what a paintbrush looked like. It's, it, you, get that kind of, you get that kind of thing. Um, though there was that bit when they moved the capital and tried to do a whole different painting style, but then that person died and they went right back. Right back to the old ways. Which I actually think is particularly fascinating. Um, just that idea, they were like, well, ah, good, they're dead, let's, let's stop all this foolishness and go back to what we were doing. <laughs> Never mind. Ah, <laughs> uh, ancient Egypt. Thanks for leaving so much stuff for us to look at. Ah, oh, let's see. Ah uh, yes, there's there is that there is that there was a a fair amount of uh, of sibling marriage apparently in in Egyptian pharaoh families. Oops, I was I was doing really well with my pressure there, and then I then I messed it up. Oh well. learning. I'm learning to slip paint. <laughs> it's a learning process. Much like, much like we're learning about, about history in chat today. What we really need is for an archaeologist to come in here and like tell us how wrong we are and school us on <laughs> on everything we're talking about. Just be like, yes, but. Okay. Almost all the way around. Okay, two, two. Two stripes. There we go. Stripes all the way around. What am I doing now? Where, where, where will I, where will I put stripes next? Like this, I think, is what we'll do. Sure. Why not? Why not? I'll just, I'll just do what I want. <laughs> ah, yes. Royal, royal lineages are a hot mess. Just go down the legs. Why not? Let's.
All right, where are we? Ah, uh, good. We've we've finally we have finally come to the patriarchy in chat. I wondered I wondered when when it would come up. Yeah, most, most, most women in history, um, get, uh, get thrown under the bus whenever it becomes easy. <laughs> the patriarchy never comes up, it's just always there. That's fair. That's fair, Jonah Snark. Ah, uh, the, the the difference the world would be if if history was filled with female rulers. We'll never know. All right, I'm back to the stripes. I'm back to I'm back to cow stripes. Curvy curvy stripes. Squiggly lines. Oh dear. <laughs> Auntie Shepherd is waiting to become a warlord. You do have a spear. There's hope. You are you are equipped. And also vertical stripes back here. Because that's what we did in front. Oh no, battle, an emu battle chariot. Okay. Try and... Emulate what I just did in reverse. It's true. I, I just, you just, you just seem, seem more enamored with the spear. Also, it's probably better for, for, for conquering on, on, on ox back. Just, it's got reach. A semi-tame emu as a mascot. I like, I was just like, no, only semi-tame. I mean, it is an emu. So, all right, I feel like, I feel like this cow is also done. I feel like, I feel like this is, is pretty, pretty complete. It's too big to sleep, it's too big to sleep with under your pillow. You can't really fit a spear under your pillow. All right, so we have two cows, two cows. Hang on, we can, we can bring everything closer so we can see both cows. Two cows. Here's a third cow. Now, third cow. Will the third cow be both colors or will it be red? Questions. Questions, questions abound. I think when I paint the owl, I will strain the red again. I will find some cheesecloth or something. 
It is it is safer to keep a sword in your pillow than a firearm. That's true. Um, but chat focused. <laughs> oh, is this is this the cap? Because I I already I did this little flip tail, so I already kind of broke with tradition. Um, is this the cow that uses both colors or are we sticking, are we sticking to a, to our, to our firm, our firm backing of, of sort of, of sort of history? This cow wobbles. I may have to fix that. A sharp thing. I can, I can make that stop. Just gonna make a mess. Hmm. So, you gotta vote for for both. Tail up as a cow for the modern age. It's cool. It's cool. Ah, he still wobbles. Why dost thou wobble? It's like trying to fix a wobbly table. Well, I guess he just wobbles. I guess that's just his life. Oh well. <laughs> okay. All the colors. I'm seeing all the colors. <laughs> sort of, sort of history. Um, so we're going with we're going with all the colors. I like it. I like it. I think we should do it. I agree. We'll, we'll do. We'll do black for sort of the face features. Um, I liked my, I liked my curve. On on the, the other, black, the black slip cow. So let's. Let's do that again. Sort of nose curve. And and then oh let's see. Let's do a little thing at the base of the horns that's slightly different this time. We'll do that kind of thing around. Hello, Planet Guardian, who came in to tell me how to stop my cow from wobbling like a table. Um, yeah, black tip horns. Um, but we're gonna do little, little like ring of 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 decorative lines around the base. Um, yeah, I was doing that thing where you plane where you plane each table leg, and and all you're doing is making your cow shorter. <laughs> And your cow still wobbles, you know. It wasn't. I stopped. I stopped before I went too far. Is what I'm saying. Just gonna. fair I uh I am the sort of person that'll just wedge a bit of folded cardboard under a table leg and be like this is fine forever this is in fact I have a, a plant bog on my deck um and the car or the the plywood under it started to sag so I just shoved a pebble on one side to hold the the, the bowl of the bog steady and was like this is good this is enough this is fine. Forever. This is my permanent solution. What could possibly go wrong? Okay. Tips of the ears, and then let's do... Let's do a little... Rings, or let's just do stripes. Rings were a little bit much, I think. Yeah, it's it's a it's a DIY solution. Just 
just wedge a thing under it. All right. Again, kind of in the way of my own camera, but uh, okay. I think that that yeah, we'll do that'll be the black. I think. Oh no, wait. Let's do no. Let's do the rings around the eyes in red. That seems like more fun. Let's let's swap to red. Uh, red dries out quickly. Just gonna have to reconstitute that a little bit again. I think it's I think it's that I did not filter out all of the grog. Ah, uh, so grainy. Such, such a not fine enough filter. Okay. Clean off my hands. Dry them with this towel that I swear I just washed, but is all like just permanently scarred. Scarred in clay. Shave is off. I mean, you could just you could just take the like the tail. Yeah, just like like take a pair of scissors and trim the tail. That should be fine. I say. <laughs> okay. Again, I'm really good at that gesture. I'm really good at, at the at the, the down swoop, but then I have to do the other half. And I'm for some reason not as good at it. I mean it's it's okay. It's it's a it's an okay fine line. Acceptable. Okay, I'm getting the hang of it. I feel like I feel like I have improved. I feel like I've improved at my fine line brushwork with slip. Oh yeah, you're right. Tail hair might be too coarse. Um, more of a scrub brush, less of a paintbrush. Okay, let's see. What what red shall we do? You know what? I think we're we're gonna be squiggly all over. I think multicolored cow is just gonna is just gonna go for it. Um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, I think the longer, the longer sort of outer hairs are probably better than like the, the shorter, softer under hairs for brushwork. Um, but that's a guess. I don't actually, I don't, I don't have cow hairs to compare with me at the moment. So I don't know. I I can't I can't give a definitive best best cow hair statement for brushes. Okay. Squiggly lines. Yeah, see now now I'm just now I'm trying to be like fancy about it. Like final the final cow gets all gets all the uh the benefit of the learning on the previous cows. Gets all the decorative squiggles. Just all over decorative squiggles. Yes. 
is the final count. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Look for look for a future stream where where we learn about about handmade brushes. I don't know. I don't have I don't have animal hair around except for cat hair, which I think would make a terrible paintbrush. So So who knows? We'll see. If I get a package and it has paintbrushes in it, I'll know what happened. All the squiggly lines. Yeah, German, yeah, German, sh hmm, German Shepherd guard hairs, yeah, maybe. They've got pretty, pretty long, straight. Guard hairs. But a lot of it has to do with like how well they'll form a point and how well they'll like hold the substance. Hmm. I've literally painted myself into a corner. Where do I go from here? I guess, I guess this way. Down the back. Yep. Yep, down, the, all the way down the back. Oh man, painting this L is gonna be a whole other thing. Gonna have to, uh, reconstitute my slip later. I'm gonna have to, gonna have to strain the red, I think, in order to get the details that I need to. Okay, let's. Go this way. Oh dear. I think no, I think I think either the next the next sculpture thing will be either the bat that I keep threatening to do or or we'll start the uh we'll start the crazy octopus fountain. Um, the thing about the fountain is that I need the pump first because it has to fit inside the thing I make. So, um, so a lot of that depends on, on how Amazon is going to treat its warehouse workers. Because <laughs> I'm not crossing that picket line. <laughs> There's a patron tier for pot. That's a fair point. Let's make make a tier for, for, for pottery requests. As opposed to sketch requests. All right. Stripies. There. Let's, uh, let's see what, you know what, let's paint. <laughs> it's the stop with your hairbrain notions, Shep tier. Just, it's a tier just for Shep. It's, Created it. Created a tier of, of of Patreon just just for that. Okay, let's. It's fine. I am perfectly capable of doing whatever I want and not asking for requests if I feel like I want to. But uh, often I kind of need a topic. 
go in this dream so many times a week before you're like, I don't know, I guess I'm just going to draw the thing I was going to draw anyway. I'm just going to, going to, there, I gave him a little tuft. Um, just, you know, really going for it with the tail. All right. Final, the final cow, black and red. Squiggles all over with a red tail with a little, a little brush tip. Um, we finished, we finished the cows. And interestingly, we finished more or less on time. Although we did start slightly late. Um, because I always start slightly late. I don't, I don't know, I don't know why I don't just say 10 after any given time. Um, so I'm just going to move these out of the way so we can put our, our herd here. I'll just have them all staring at the, at the dog. Oh, and, and weird cow. There you go, weird cow. He's a little farther away. He's not. He's not part of he's not part of the uh part of the group really. All right. Um so yeah, we 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 did the thing. Um the black slip is quite nice. The red slip needs some work, but I have plenty of it to deal with and try, so so there's time. Um I feel like the cows went went the slip painting went well. I think the cows look like look like I anticipated they would look. Um, nice, nice, uh, a nice variety, but they're all clearly part of a team. And uh, and then our and then our good dog, our 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 good dog, taking care of the cows. Just arrange our little tableau here. All right. Um, we did it. I made slip. I painted it. The cows are done. Um, they will not have the nice sort of sheen when they're fired of, uh, of actual ancient Greek pottery, but I'm not going to glaze them um, with clear glaze. I think I'm just going to fire them like they are and let that be sort of the final product because I feel like if I dip them in glaze it won't it won't it'll be too obvious that it's not the way it was meant to be done um so yeah I uh I cannot make you guys a quail I am unprepared to work with clay. I'm only prepared to paint with clay. <laughs> um, so. Oh, hey. You say quail. You say quail. Hang on. We can go slightly late because I've had an idea. Because nothing, because nothing's getting fired. <laughs> so. So why not? Why not have some fun? Um, because back here in the back of all my unfired stuff, you remember, I have... I have sombrero quail. Um, so, um, so you want to slip? Let's let's slip paint. Let's slip paint a sombrero. Why not? Let's do it. As I've gotten clay on the thing I just washed. Okay, we got black and we got red. Let's slip paint a sombrero. Um, you could paint the whole sombrero red with black detail. We could leave the sombrero white and do red and black detail. Let's do red and black detail and leave it white. Well, buff. It's going to be kind of sandy colored. Um, so, so, some sombrero quail. Um, while while you weren't oh, and I have to have to hang on. Let me let me fix my camera again to to focus on the. On, there we go. Um, so while you were while you were away. I added some some detail 
added some press detail to the sombrero so that it's got um, a little bit of a pattern. So let's let's spend the last little bit of time here. Um, we'll just go for a little bit extra longer. <laughs> some breath crap. Yeah, that does sound a little bit like a cold medication. Um, or like, yeah, like a sleep medication. Okay, so we're just going to... We're just going to take the last few minutes here to have a little bit of fun and and paint and paint in the pattern on on sombrero quail because you guys you guys wanted quail and I just happened to have one sitting around um, and the longer things don't get fired the more likely I am to 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 do things to them because <laughs> they're just sitting there So, you know, I'll just quickly, quickly decorate our quail. Just painting in the, the press pattern that I made. I forget with what. Something square. Maybe the back of a tool or something. I don't know. I don't know where I found it, but I definitely pressed it in there to create a zigzag pattern. Um. Quail and a sombrero. Yeah, I, um, I might be a scientist. Were you were you there when I when when we when we were googling uh, historic Mexican figures and looking for like a proper sombrero? We did like a historical reference dive for sombreros because I googled sombrero and I got like the worst, most like whitest guys with stick on mustaches for Halloween and it was so bad. Um, so there we go. Painted a little pattern on our on our sombrero. Um, you may you may dibs you may dibs the sombrero quail. They might be scientists. I don't know when it will be fired. But uh but one day. And then let's do let's do a black hat band. Because why not? Because why not use both colors? There we go. Happy hand. Happy hand and decorative zigzag. Um, shipping should survive to Australia. I ship, I ship pretty, uh, pretty package D. Um, I, I use a lot of, a lot of air filled pockets and bubble wrap. <laughs> I try, in fact, whenever I ship pottery, I try and have air pockets all the way around on the outside of the box. So it's just floating in a, in a, in a circle of air because I'm paranoid that that I'm going to ship someone pottery and it's going to break. Especially when it's stuff like the Oxalotl or like some expensive sculpture where someone's paid, you know, $75 for a specific art piece. And then I send it to them and it breaks in the mail and I would just feel too bad. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Quail. Quail is, uh, slip painted. Your, your your shouts of quail have been have been fulfilled. I bring you quail. I'm just gonna put him with the cows, I guess. Makes sense. It's a riding hat. Seems fine. 
Okay. Now we'll do the wrap up. There we go. Um. Yeah, I actually, I fly with pottery that, but I still package it. I put it in boxes, I wrap it in bubble wrap, and then I put it in a duffel bag and carry it on. It's, you know, it's quite the thing. Anyway, thanks for joining me for slip paintings and cows. It was fun to try and figure out how it worked. Um, I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, don't forget that Wednesday I'll be hosting Hannah Combe. We will continue our bird D&D story with her, so join me in chat for her, and uh, and that should be great fun. If you're if you're missing if you're missing talking to me, you can type to me in her chat, and I will see you for Friday tea time. As usual, there's a Patreon and a Ko-fi and a YouTube channel. It's all linked below. If you want to support me or see past streams, it's all there. Um, probably we'll have a poll for this Friday. It's going to be digital art. So watch my twi Twitter. Watch my Twitter. And I'll, uh, I'll let you guys shout at me about what you want to see. Until then, everybody, stay safe. Be kind. Stay indoors. Self-quarantine. And I will see you later on the internet. Bye.